Hey everybody, welcome back to We Are Podcast Network. This is We Are Air, Season 3, Episode 16, Quarantine Cast. What have we been watching? If this is your first time checking out the podcast, thank you so much. Please go to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or iTunes, and give We Are Podcast a like. And if you get a chance, head over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. We're at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at backslash We Are Podcast. With that said, on to the podcast. We are error. Hey everybody, welcome to the We Are Air podcast. This is Duck. I'm here with Jake and Javi. And ladies and gentlemen, what is the We Are Air podcast? The podcast to talk about movies, entertainment, whatever the fuck we want to talk about. This is Quarantine Cast. That's right. We are in quarantine now. We are in each of our own apartments. We are talking through the magic of Zoom and the internet. So the audio quality is going to be a little bit different than normal, but we really, meaning me, I really needed to do this. I really needed to have a quarantine cast. With Bro, I've been stir crazy as shit. Like, yeah. this is the most fun I've had in easily a month. Uh, dude, has it been a month already? Uh, I mean, not for me having fun. I just realized it's been almost a fucking month that we've been in quarantine. Let's start by talking about our own personal quarantines, because this is quarantine cast. Number one, Jake was the first to truly go into quarantine, it seems like, and he has been in it the longest. Jake, how are you holding up? <coughs> He's got it, Javi! <laughs> He's got the Rona. He's got I'm the doing Corones. All right. Doing all right. Pretty Pretty all right. Jake Shannon, doesn't really sure. have Corona. He's not in that kind of quarantine. He's just staying no. at home for um, safety. How's it been? Yeah, I guess first. Yeah, and you know what? Whenever we last talked about this, I was also the first to be like, ah, it's just, it's all hullabaloo. This will blow over. And I'm, boy, is my face red right now. <laughs> and also, <laughs> this is not a zombie bite. I'm I was sure wondering what that was the entire time. I was a zombie today while trying to purchase some goods at the local uh, livery. Um, <laughs> was it just somebody was looking for TP and they went after you? What the fuck is uh, that? No, it, it's definitely not a bite. You got it. Anyways, by um, a so other than that, I've been playing, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 a lot. You can see I put up some decor. It looks awesome, by the way. Here. Behind Thanks. Jake, you can see all the Star Wars Hot Wheels and the posters. You did the right thing because it's just the original trilogy. It looks like it. What's behind your head? What's the one behind? Uh, I, I got oh! it. I fucking love that one, too. So we got Star Wars. We got the alternative. Is that the Japanese poster? Uh, it's uh, some reflective one. The one on the left over here, over this shoulder, is the, the Empire. Empire. And it's the original Star Wars, and the rest is all Hot Wheels. It's fucking it. awesome. If you can, uh, we're going to get a picture of that and put that up on the, the uh, Instagrams, if you will. I would only say Javi's beating you in the sense that he's actually in fucking outer space right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how the fuck do you do this? <laughs> I'm a god, fellas. Well, oh, well, we'll, we'll come I back to you. I am omnipotent. Take me, sweet leader. Take me. <laughs> Jake, other than that, how has it been? You said you've been playing Red Dead Redemption. You've been chilling for the most part. Are you ready to get back to work? Are you ready for this shit? Oh, to be over? man, I've been ready to get back to work since the week it happened. I know. Honestly. Man. I mean, it's like I told uh, a couple of other people already. It's the vacation I needed but can never ask for. So right. take that how you want it. I, I like working. You're a workaholic, man. Yeah, you really I, are. I it's been three weeks, I think. And like you said, last time we talked, it was like, fuck this. It'll be fine. Who gives a shit? It's well, a lie. It's a, And I really did. I was harping that hardcore. Go back and listen. Now my perspective has changed quite drastically. Uh, there is a serious fear, and me and Javi were talking about this earlier at all times. Javi, how's your quarantine been? Well, I'll let you know when I actually go into quarantine and actually Ooh, have one. Yeah. But you have been social distancing. We all have been. So how has that been? I know at first you were a little bit freaked out, but you seem to have made peace with it. Bro, I've gone through a revelation over this last two weeks, week and a half. Like, I'm still working. Like, I, I, I told you today, and I told the group yesterday, it's like, I'm playing fucking Russian roulette every fucking day, pretty much. And I fucking hate it. Kind of explain just, that real quick, what you mean by that. You are in a job, you're still working, it, you're lucky, but at the same time, you are interacting daily with uh, individuals who could potentially be bringing the corona. With individuals that I know for a fact are in contact with people that actually have it. Because I've had clinics, fucking doctors and nurses bring iPads, cell phones to me from the actual play. Hey, I need this up and running. All right. 
So we, yeah, but someone's like, we, like I, I said, the fuck out of it. But I would have that lingering all the back of my head, like, what the fuck? I could have it today. You are essentially saving lives, though. They cannot do what they're doing to save lives without the tools that they need to do their fucking jobs. That Damn. is true. You're doing something good. It sucks. You have to do this. And I, it bothers me also. And I know how much of a hypochondriac you are in a lot of the <laughs> God, it might stuff. ever. It yeah. Like, oh, and it sucks. And I feel bad for you, but I'm also very proud of you because you're doing some good shit, man. You're doing good work. Like, this stuff is essential. I'm not fucking even making fun of the word essential like, yeah. you know, people are right now. But I'm just saying, it is an essential thing. And I, I thank you for doing what you're doing, honestly, man. No, thanks. I really appreciate that. Uh, the Russian roulette thing, like, every day, I just always think, could I have gotten it today? Could I have gotten it today? And that, I was in the countdown in my head, like, two weeks and shit. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm off. Now I just got to wait two weeks. And I was like, oh, wait. I don't have the luxury of waiting two weeks at home to see if I want to be fucking sick with this shit. Right. So, like, my, ca- my counter's always restarting at the end of every day. And it just, I feel like, like, it's never going to end. But there will be an insight. We talked about when this is going to peak towards the 24th or so of this month here in Texas. But I think the long-term effects are going to hit us even more because I know for me, once this is done, it's going to take a minute before I want to go to the movies. And I want to go to the fucking movies right now. I want to go do anything. I want to go to the movies. I want to go top golf. I want to go to the museums. I want to go hang out with everybody under the fucking sun. I want to party like crazy. I want to. And this shit sucks. So I think after it's all done, we should throw a huge fucking party, four-day fucking rager, get drunk, (laughs) get fucked up, just have so much fun, just be nasty, like, early 20-year-old, like, guys, and just (laughs) party! I want to party! I'm partying now! I want to party! Yeah, I'm definitely giving everybody a big hug after all this is over. dude. I'm telling you, man. I can't wait. Do you guys think, going from the point where we were like, this is fucking fake, it's the news that we're playing it, to the seriousness of it within the last, not trying to freak you out, in the last three weeks, we've lost 50,000. Like, I think in the U.S. as of today, like, we like 12,000 people have died. Yes. Yeah, but, I mean, how do you dispute that? And how do they know? Like, how do you go figure that out? Did we just blindly accept all this? That's the part that scares me is we've had to blindly accept a lot of it. I don't have any way of fucking confirming any of this shit. You can say, I don't know, maybe two or three people who have come down with it, and that's through people that know people, right, but yeah. I still kind of know of them, but I don't know the fucking person personally. You know and what I'm saying? And they need to stay far away from us. Yeah, I'm just cool. kidding. No, no, no. I, no, I agree with you 100%. Yes, there is something going on that we do need to worry about, but also, is it as bad as what is being told? I don't know. Like that, okay, so that video that I sent y'all, I don't know if y'all heard that fucking the guy asked the likes of that shit could be faked easily absolutely uh, but if you actually go look up the proposition whatever that she mentioned something 201 you can look it up online and it's through fucking fema and the epa or whatever and it is a fucking simulation of what would happen if something like this were to go down that's the theory oh. that that is what happened that they were, were not trying to freak out hobbs <laughs> but they, they were trying to do a simulation and do it on a small level and it got out of control. Yes. And, and that's exactly. the fear. But also my father came up with a wonderful thing. Not wonderful, terrible. But also this is all him. He says this is an excuse to kill the baby boomers. He goes, the reason they have done this is because all of us are almost to that age where we can collect that sweet, sweet money. And he goes, there are too many of us that need to collect that social security. So is it easier to pay out $2 trillion to the entire population so they will accept the fact that the baby boomers are going to die and then not have to pay out 30 to 40 k a year to each baby boomer which uh, he's okay. right uh, that uh, adds uh, up to your dad's credit that sounds like a good theory but baby boomers that term is like for america only why didn't this virus come out in america and just stay within the united states to make it look like it was an accident they started it elsewhere and then it traveled over and that is why they did not take the the actions they needed to no i think it was the hong kong protest that caused all of it and they wanted to shut that up and then that just spread from there they couldn't keep it under control they yeah. realize how powerful it was going to be. Yeah. Traveling, leaving the fucking nation because they're under persecution and everything else. And then that's how 
oh yeah, eating fucking bat. I don't know if that was the cause of it or not, but all I know is that is hysterical to me. Like that's the cause of this it was eating like a raw bat. And then well, did like, you see that catch- it happened. I don't know. I saw a fucking dude eating the head off of a fucking dead rat. A dead fucking rat. Why? And it wasn't even cooked or anything, man. Fucking had the hair on there and everything. I don't know why I saw it because fucking Facebook is fucked up with their algorithms. <laughs> no, I just want to know why this guy did it. Did you see the video? Who knows? He, okay, do I have to fucking say he was fucking Chinese? I don't fucking know. They eat bad also. What the fuck? Did you see the video of the guy eating the live mice? He was yeah, dipping so them in the- baby rats on the plate? Yeah. Yeah, Tom Green, I know. Wait, it, was, it was Tom Green? <laughs> it was a road trip. Oh, yeah, he put it in his mouth. He's all lick, 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 lick. I can't wait for the conspiracies that come out. And hopefully, I always think with conspiracy, there's somewhere there's truth in a lot of them. And I know some people hate conspiracy shit. I fucking love conspiracy stuff. Oh, I fucking love them too, man. And Javi's over there going, I hate it. <laughs> like, why, okay, why would I want to believe that everything is just fucking black and white and as it is? We all yeah. think outside the box and everything. We, and we're would... artistic fucking people. For just certain to hold that this is the way that it fucking is. That's it helps bullshit. my sanity That's if bullshit. I put it as black and white. It helps your sanity. Why does everything have to be so fucking racist with you? <laughs> <laughs> We're a melting pot. It's all about black and white. <laughs> Hobby, <laughs> Hobby, why you don't call you call not... yourself an artiste? <laughs> you must be an artiste you got a of the mind. For this shit. Connect the dots. Remember the first thing you ever did artistically, <laughs> where you connected the dots on the piece of paper, and then you filled it in. That's all we're doing, but in conspiracy yeah. ways. This fucking black and white shit is one backpack you ain't selling today, Mm -mm. sir. (laughs) Mm -mm. Mm -mm. (laughs) Well, I'm going to switch subjects here because I want to talk about we are in social distancing situation. We are stuck at home for the most part. What have you guys been watching? What has been entertaining you at this time? Because I know what I want to talk about, but I'm going to start with y'all. What has been uh, the show or the game or the whatever that you've been – you've already said – Just start um, Chernobyl again. You've watched it already once, because I know we talked about it. That was whenever it first came out. Right. So it's been almost like a year now, I guess. I think it's been a year, about a year. So you started watching it from the very beginning again? Yeah, just last night. I'm on the third episode now. And it must be bomb if you're watching it again. Oh, it's so good. As a recommendation to our listeners, what is Chernobyl about? (laughs) I can't talk. Um, so, <laughs> it's about the nuclear meltdown at the Chernobyl power plant in uh, Russia. Uh, Javi's got it. Do you hear this shit? Yeah, fucking sneezy. <laughs> what is Chernobyl? Is about you said it's about the nuclear breakdown, but isn't more than that? Isn't it like monsters or something in it? No, this is like a factual account. Well, I mean, somewhat factual account, but it was the most like realistic. Explains it in layman's terms for everybody to understand what the fucking whole devastation of the situation is they took a lot of liberties with a lot of the characters but they molded the story into a way that everyday humans can understand how nuclear fucking fission works it's really really intense and if you try to escape this home and you know you suspend disbelief and you put yourself in the situation it is one of those scary fucking situations ever Javi, yo, what have you been watching? Well, on a one of the days, one of the many days where we did zero dollars in sales, I binged the entire first season of the show called uh, "I'm Not Okay with This" on Netflix. What is it? It's that? fucking awesome. It's uh, about this the the redheaded girl from uh, it. Yes, yeah, I heard about so, this. Sophie Jessica Lillis. Like that, Lillis? The, the the younger version from the first day oh. movie. Yes, the one that had the bathroom full of blood and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. 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 And it's so, about like, uh, oh, she's she actually develops one. like telekinetic powers, and it's kind of like a badass version of Carrie. What? Yeah, it's it's fucking dope. It's just fucking weird, but it was fucking awesome. How many episodes is that? It's twenty seven episodes. Seven episodes. Of Carrie. How long? About an hour. Netflix what? original. Netflix original. Yep. So what makes it so good? What was the overarching storyline that pulled you in? It's just about a girl going through the shit, you know. Her, like it starts off like a year after her dad killed himself and shit. Of how she's just trying to fit in, and like the weird kid down the street has a crush on her. And that kid was also an it. It was an it reunion in this. Those show. it kids are killing it. Yeah, they are. Original characters. The writing is so fucking good. Like I teared up a few times with this show. All right, I'm gonna tell you guys what I watched. I watched Tiger King, and oh, I. Yeah. 
fucking loved every second of that white trash bullshit. That is the most white trash. That fucking bitch, Carol Baskins. Fucking Carol Baskins. She fed her husband to a shark. I was going to say a shark. A lot. (laughs) Whatever. She could have fed him to a shark. You heard he got chucked out of the fucking plane. Javi, I think you said you couldn't finish it. I got, I couldn't make it past the first episode. I was just why? Like, no, this, I need this, to know this. why so I can counteract yeah, it. You two are the gear team. I want to walk up. I want to say what I got to say, and I want to take what I'm going to get. Dude, you're coming out with a hard case of Dan Danzy syndrome. You got, like, you got that Danzy. Uh, yeah. Danzy, I'm not. I don't. I don't go that fucking far. You I just, hate I, anything I, that people like. Like, really, really, I hate anything <laughs> that people like. Really, this is where we're gonna go to. <laughs> I mean, right now, you can't even believe the rant that is about to be just on the fact that you're saying that I'm fucking Daisy. That is the meanest shit we've ever seen. We were friends. We were family. Like, what has quarantine done to you? All right. Now you put it that way. I, I'm sorry. I, I go, on your, go on your Danzy rant of why you didn't like Tiger King, and then we're going to spend a good 10 minutes telling you about how fucking awesome it was. Go ahead. I, 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 I believe people would say this is fucking amazing. It was a lot of craziness in that first episode, and I was like, I don't think I can keep up with this. Oh, you can keep up, bro. <laughs> Trust what me. Do you mean? That, this is not even a fucking argument. That's not even a statement. The how, good far, shit... how far in did you get? I got about like half an hour in. Oh, my God. Oh, you got nothing. Half hour in it. He got nothing. That's the problem is... You you didn't you yeah, didn't get you didn't even watch this shit. You didn't even get to talk to the dealer and get a little bit of it, bro. Like right. second I'm gonna episode, I'm gonna make it to the first episode oh. completely. The second Take the episode, bait, bro. Yeah, dude, do it because honestly, the second episode begins with a woman getting a woman who is a man getting her arm ripped off. Oh, by the way, spoilers for Tiger King all through this. We're gonna talk the fuck out of this. That's how it begins with him going, "Get the cameras out of here! Get the cameras out of here! Everyone, stay calm!" And and you're just like. <laughs> Oh shit! What happened? You hear it? He finds out about it. And he runs inside, and puts on a goddamn paramedic's jacket. Yes, <laughs> well, yes, because he's got to play the yeah. role at all oh, times. My God, he's like, and oh, my. and then he has to tell people like, "I'll give you back money." Yeah. And he turns to the camera yeah. and he goes, "This is gonna fucking ruin me." Look, I'm not gonna bullshit y'all. All right, I'm gonna give you all your money back. <laughs> One of my goddamn tiger trainers just had their arm ripped off outside. Okay, yeah. everybody's welcome to come back in a week from now. I'll give you all vouchers. Just, uh, yeah, I figured you should hear from here before we let everybody else know or, you know, the news <laughs> turns it out of proportion. <laughs> it's so fucking oh my good. God. <laughs> Everything that happens is like, you could not make a movie. It, it's literally, it's like this a... It sounds like it would be a great Christopher Guest movie. It, Dude, they've it, already I wouldn't like, even say that. so many fucking pictures of, of like the movie, who the character should be. <laughs> Like, Danny McBride should be Joe Exotic. <laughs> Agreed. Like, they, they, like, they've already cast the entire fucking movie. You would just be doing a poorer version of that insanity that is. Because these guys are like cartoon characters come to fucking life. It is amazing. And the more you watch, the more you're just like, how are these people real? <laughs> now, I know white trash. I know those people exist. But at the same time. <laughs> That's Oklahoma. Man. Oh, dude. Oklahoma and Florida and Georgia white trash. Because yeah. he's in Oklahoma. Carol Baskins, Can who we is all just, just as bad. Doc Anil, he just oh. he knew what was going on. With this fucking harem of women, are he, you he kidding me? Like Dude, it's insane. When they get to talking to that girl and she's like, I don't remember how the boob job came along, but the schedule was set. And next thing I know, I look great with these titties. And I'm like, this motherfucker was using these tigers to bang all these mediocre looking bitches who had fake titties. Keep in mind, like I said, Mid-tier women love tigers and fake titties. That's all I learned from that. And I got to get me some tigers <laughs> and some fake titty appointments because I love mid-tier <laughs> women. I love them. Ugly face, hot body. Let's fucking go. He is right. <laughs> he is right. <laughs> I told you I've been waiting to talk about this shit. That man is my Sherpa. Um... <laughs> But what else? You don't even know how because you get to see it. Like, Jake, that is, you agree with me. That's just one aspect of how amazing Tiger King was, right? Oh, dude. Yeah, he's the man. Oh, bro. Bro, all of it. Like, and what's even funnier is, like, he was a polygamist. He had two husbands, Javi. Two husbands. And you find out these motherfuckers weren't even gay. They were sucking yeah. dick for meth. The one dude was doing it for pot. For pot. Yeah. He yeah. was sucking dick for marijuana. 
<laughs> Are you kidding me? Who's- I think they. I think they painted him in a in a weird light. I think he was still doing meth, but they said his thing originally was marijuana. <laughs> was mostly- but he wanted to shoot some fucking guns and pet tires, and that's what he reduced himself to. It's like I'm originally from LA. I moved to Oklahoma. <laughs> that's not the way this shit works. You don't go from LA to Oklahoma. You go from Oklahoma to LA to suck cock. You're right. And this he- guy goes from LA to Oklahoma to suck cock. <laughs> Maybe it's he realized like, he hit rock bottom already. Yeah, and he's just like, fuck fucking, it, I'm in Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> let, me, yeah. let me go down to the tiger pole. Let me fucking pull the tiger, shoot the gun, suck some dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so uh, good, though. And that, living and then, the good life, man. That's what I'm doing. Hey, everyone, it's just Doc jumping in here real quick to say thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If you're enjoying it, please head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes. And give We Are Podcast a like. And if you get a chance, head over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash We Are Podcast. And if you're enjoying the podcast today, please share with your friends. It's the only way we can grow this network. With that said, back to the podcast. But it it gets crazy though, Hobbs. Spoilers, big spoilers. The dude blows his fucking brains out on accident. Who with literal Russian roulette? Literal Russian roulette. Fucking, Joe Exotic? No, his no, second husband. His, his his love with the golden nuggets. Yeah, his LA. Yeah, that's what he called <laughs> him too. What the fuck was that? His 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 Los Angeles husband. He eulogized his second husband's funeral in front of his mother, his his uh, mother in law, Joe Exotics. This is the LA and, uh, kids fucking mom. He brought her about out. about how he had rubbed her son's nuts in his face and <laughs> just brought him all this joy, those golden nuggets. <laughs> he, would, he would come rub them right in my face. <laughs> his, her mom, his mom was sitting there wiping tears from her eyes yeah, she's she like that sounds like my baby <laughs> she was fucking tweaking her ass off also he got her hooked on fucking meth as well so that's yeah. why she was okay with the whole situation but with her son being fucking this weirdo like dude it's nuts it's at, literally nuts in the face nuts like it's crazy dude it's it's insane you have no idea what you're fucking missing bro You've got to watch it. Yeah. And, and we haven't like, even brought up the fucking villain yet. Oh. The villain. The villain, which is actually the victim, which is, I oh. don't know how the fuck they pulled this shit off, is a woman named Carol Baskins who lives in Florida who has tigers in small ass cages. That bitch, Carol Baskins, down there in Florida. Fucking bitch. But by the end of it, didn't you feel like she was a fucking bitch? She was worse. Yeah, that's she what even saying. said so. She's like, we don't hold tigers on our preserve to breed them and make them live. We keep them here to keep them safe until they die. And like that's paraphrasing, but it was something along those lines. You're even worse than what he's doing, honestly. The cages were like this big too. Oh like, yeah, they would show the cages, and you see a poor tiger stuck in there with a paw flipping out the side <laughs> of one of the little holes, and it's like, Rawr. like Joe Exotic was breeding the tigers. And he was selling, and that was one of the big issues, and that's one of the reasons he went to jail. But the biggest reason he went to jail, if you didn't know he went to jail, Javi, he is actually in Fort Worth he right did. now. He didn't watch that shit. And Joe Exotic is in Fort Worth right now. Yeah. All I'm saying is we could break him out if we really tried. He's got COVID. <laughs> and I'm, I'm half tempted. Hey, man, as long as he got meth and tigers, I'm with it. Yeah, bro, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to get Joe. I'm going yeah. to get Joe. You guys can't stop. Joe. Fucking even Trump today was like, you know what, Joe? We might have to come get you, okay? It's going to be amazing. Because they asked him, they said, would you look into it? And he said, absolutely. Because here's my thing. White trash has to stick together. And well, Trump is white trash, and I love it. He's the best. He puts ketchup on a steak. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and the spaghetti. Listen, I put ketchup on steak and spaghetti, too. Once again. Are you serious? Doc knows white trash. Motherfucker, I'm white trash! I you told you this! That? Yes, bitch! You never had no Heinz ketchup on a steak? Harvey, stop. All right, Why? stop judging him. Why are you judging me? Have you ever tried it? I have. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are we going to say? Real I, put, I, put, I put ketchup and macaroni and cheese. Uh, Florida opened up the case of Carol Baskin's missing husband yes. after this. Because uh, the other Dr. thing Ember. is she might have killed her husband. That's how she's gotten all of her money. And the documentary makes a pretty 
fucking good case for the fact that she killed her husband. That's probably the best episode, episode three of the whole thing. Her body language and every time whenever it gets brought up, it's just like, okay, you definitely fucking, you know something, you did something fishy. And speaking of fishy, her saying, what, I would like have to cover them sardine oil or something. It's like, well, that's very specific, Carol. How would yeah, you know how that? Would you know that Carol? And, I used to eat them. And it's amazing because Joe Exotic, this being his ultimate villain, his be all end all, this is his Skeletor to his He Man. He is what I think of Carol Baskins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the gunshot. I forgot about that where he was blowing up the effigy. But the music oh, yeah. video that he made of her feeding like this steak to the here lions and, and shit like that. Yes, here, kitty. That shit had me rolling <laughs> laughing. Like, that's what I'm saying, dude. The shit he does, I'm like, yeah. you mount me to hate this man. But I can't hate this man. I'm sorry. Like he's, you can't. Like, he's too much of a character. You want to watch right. Tiger King. Like I want him to get out of jail and I want to watch his show. It's a train wreck happening constantly. All the time. But All you the time. just cannot help but watch it and root for it. Like, yes, keep going. Go, like, Joe Exotic. Talking, what the fuck's going to happen this. next? Like, it is, yeah. it is literally Jerry Springer come to life. It is the yeah. most white trash thing it's, ever. It's fucking, it's run, runny, run. No, what's that? Oh, dude, David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. It's a Mr. Watch it. Download it. it. Right. I got to watch it. I will say the last thing is when he gets put in jail, and the reason he gets put in jail is because he gets set up by his new partner. It's literally, if if Smug Smug could take on human form and just walk around this. this, I can't even do it. Like, he looks, his regular smiling face is smug. Like, it's like. No, this guy is. It's insane. No, this guy is Ed Hardy. Like, the (laughs) clothing line, Ed Hardy. Like, Affliction. Oh. <laughs> you had me out of affliction. I was like, you know what I'm saying, though? You remember Ed Hardy? That everybody wore it. Fucking Brett Michaels. Like, they'd wear these fucking, like, hats with these fucking bandanas and shit. Like, oh, yeah. Is, That's is all he is. Like, with the Oakley hat this, that I've seen the Yes. Movie? This guy is like he's he's a thousand years old and he's mm-hmm. pretending like he's fucking 28. Like, yeah. he. Reminds me of like Patrick Stevens, whatever Patrick Stevens was twenty eight. Like that's how Patrick <laughs> he's wearing the fucking motorcycle jackets and shit. Like which would be acceptable then? But this guy is like fucking eight hundred easily. It's, it's as though Boo Boo came to life on a white man, and <laughs> and his wife is pretty hot. I thought so at least. Once again, mid tier woman, red hair, totally. Bad. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then he got to pick out the nanny. What yeah, a and, he's, also. and obviously like, little... she's pregnant. His wife's pregnant, and they're in a, a open relationship. And he's, oh, yeah. he's sitting there smugly talking about how he's going to fuck the nanny. He's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's like, she, <laughs> and when yeah, that baby yeah, pops yeah. out. It's mm. very clear what's going on here. Oh, yeah. like, and that was the only time she looked she's annoyed. Like, she's like, really, bitch? I'm having your yeah, kid right now. But like, even still, she's like, well, yeah, I get to fuck her, too. And also, she's yeah. bilingual, so she can teach the baby Spanish. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, yeah, she, did, she was trying. And he's like, bilingual. Blah, blah, blah. That's all yeah. he was thinking about. But they set him up. And he got set up by Captain Smug and this other guy who was just literally a G.I. Joe, cracked out of his mind, came to life. It is so <laughs> fucked up. And all they're doing is talking about how they set him up. And I'm like, aren't they incriminating themselves? And then they say, like, oh, we, we got a plea deal. We're good. We, we can say whatever the fuck we want. I'm like, I'm like this shit is insane. Because he put out a hit on Carol Baskins down there in Florida. Uh, Dude, bitch. That bitch, that Carol bitch. Baskin. She killed that her fucking, fucking husband. Bitch. She's no good. She pays shit. Can't stand it. Fuck you, Carol. Javi. It's what I think about you, Carol. You've Fuck gotta you. watch it. You have no <laughs> idea. Everyone has to watch this shit. Even kindergartners. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah, no, they should. This is fucking this is gonna be important. Go. Actually, you know what? This is gonna be in the curriculum whenever they're teaching <laughs> fucking high schools now. Oh, you're we're, right. We're living in a generation of homeschooled children being homeschooled by day drinkers who are gonna be in Congress someday. <laughs> It was about the time the Tiger King came out on Netflix. <laughs> Think something else happened in our society, but I can't remember what it is. How did Joe Exotic get up there in the scene? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, 10 out of 10. It's so fucking good. I'm probably going to have to watch this again. And they added an episode 8. Did you see that? They came out with a where are they now? Well, I'll tell you where he fucking is. He's in Fort Worth prison. We'll have to go break him out later. It's going to be oh, amazing. Oh, wow. I didn't know they did that. Yep. They came out with an episode eight. If not, they're coming out with it like next week, I think. So it's one of those where are they now episodes. And honestly, I kind of want them to get out. Plus, there's tons of footage still out there. 
I hope to God they can make something else out of it because that shit was entertaining as fuck. Yeah, but it all got burned up. Yeah, oh yeah, it all got burned up as you saw the fucking, the man in black walking over to the fucking thing. That guy was a character and a half too, the producer. Everyone. Oh, the fucking, the junkie that was on the entertainment tonight? Yes. uh, Bob O'Reilly? That guy who was just smoking, he was a walking chimney just smoking the whole time and he's like, I can't, I saw Joe Exotic and I knew from the second I saw him. That's my million dollar baby right there. And I'm like, all right, please, calm the fuck down. That'd be J.K. Simmons in the movie. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. All right, let's move on past Joe Exotic. Fucking amazing. 10 out of 10. Watch that shit. Jake, have you watched anything else? What else did we watch? Onward. Onward, yes. Onward was fucking amazing. Wow, what a great fucking movie. Jake watched it first. I think I got to it, and then Javi got to it after that. You told me that it was coming out. And I was like, no fucking way. Yeah, it was and really weird well, because hold it, it was at it was at twelve o'clock that morning though. Like literally six hours after you text me, it was on. Like the movie only made a hundred million in theaters. It cost two hundred million to make, and they lost. But nobody could go out and see it. No one could go see it, and they just it was a bad release for a long time. time. Yeah, but that's the thing is a lot of these movies have been coming out, but Disney saw an opportunity to boost their numbers for the Disney app and threw it on. Dude, there. holy! That's fuck. why they need to release fucking Black Widow now. They won't do it. That's, a billion, the app. that's oh, a billion dollar movie. They won't do that. There ain't no way. <laughs> they moved that shit to November. Oh, yeah. It, no, they do it the day, the weekend that they release people out of quarantine. I don't think people are going to go to the movies. Not They're, after the first week. Yeah, There was, probably... was a debate about that. To get people to go to the movies, you're going to need a big fucking movie. You're going to need a Black Widow. You're going to need something like that to get people to go, I think I'll risk going out and getting the disease still. But onward, what did you guys think of that movie? First of all, did you cry? I cried like 15 minutes in. That's when I first got it. Every fucking Pixar movie I cry two or three times. Yeah. I cried like a bitch at the beginning. I cried like a bitch in the middle. And at the end, I cried like I was watching The Notebook. And <laughs> I was, I was like, no, no. I cried more for that than I did The Notebook. Like it, yeah, that, yeah. it hurt my soul, but not in a bad way, in a hopeful, it, it was, it just hit me in such a way. And the way that, like Javi said, the way they handled that, big spoilers, uh, ending with showing the father character. Holy fuck, dude. I love how they handled that. I like how... That moment was just meant for those two characters, and the audience didn't get to see that. Yeah, that that was beautiful because that's what an intimate moment should yeah, be, and that's so. that's why it worked, I think. And then him giving—I did well, that, not see that coming, though. I did not the see. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. also the I, sacrifice saying, "Hey, you know, you actually got to fucking meet him. This would mean way more to you, yeah, because you remember him, and you get you to know? say goodbye." Yeah, that's when I like started to choke up because, uh, like, when he said, "When I saw." dad there with tubes he wasn't the same and i just i was scared and i was like at that moment that's when i told myself i'm never gonna be scared again oh that was beautiful yeah that, that fucking, was beautiful that was, and it was that, that regret just fucking kills so good and i love the fact that they build up barley that they build him up to kind of be that loser slacker character you know the guy who's over the age but still loves all of his nerdy shit Kind of like us. Yeah. Um, oh, look at him. He needs he to grow cool. up. How dare he still be interested in these things? And you need to put away childish things and become an adult. And the whole time we're watching it, we're like, well, that kind he of speaks to him. raised his brother. It's well, the that's the thing. They, lovable loser, though. They I mean, didn't but... show that. That's what was awesome is they showed a stereotype. They yeah. showed a version that you could go, oh, okay, right on this motherfucker over here. And then – when they started showing the little moments and how he was always there and how he was always protecting his brother and how he was always on the lookout for him and how he was that father figure destroyed me. Like, like I'm like, you wanted us to assume one thing and the truth was in layers that you could never even see because his brother couldn't see it. So we were viewing him from his brother's perspective. He loved him, but yeah, he was having his own issues, his own identity crisis, and he couldn't see those things and he couldn't see where his nurturing truly was coming from. And I thought that was beautiful. Your father figure doesn't always have to be a father. Sometimes a parental figure or somebody who takes care of you can be right in front of you and you don't even realize it. I don't know. It just spoke to me on so many levels. I can be your father. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful. I, and, and it's fun and entertaining, too. It's an adventure. It's a quest. And for, like, yeah. we love no, D&D. No, yeah, I was going to say, it's a total D&D movie also, though. Like it they is. even They references it several times throughout it. It's a it's so meta that they reference playing D and D within a D and D movie. 
Right. And that's what makes it so great because it's nerd culture, it's lore, it's it's a total love letter yeah. to D&D. And, and D&D in a lot of ways is a love letter to, you know, the dungeon crew or whoever you got going on, your friends and going well, on I mean, an adventure. Yeah, I mean, but it's all tribute to everything Tolkien-ish, I guess, or just whatever, just anything fucking nether realm, middle earth fucking... All that Narnia. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. All Absolutely. that shit. It's Fantasy all fucking in general. metaphysical, fucking fantastical, fairy tale like shit. What I really like is like, well, one of Pixar's better movies since In and Out. I, I'm going to say it's one of my top Pixar movies. Mm. I love it. I yeah, really throw it, yeah, in the top. I would say, I really, did you guys watch Toy Story 4 yet? No, I did. Oh, I did. Oh, man. I liked it. I did. It was really good. I, um, and. I think I was one of the first to say, like, hey, is did they not already say everything that they had to say in the third one? Right. Like, why do we need a fourth one? Upon watching it, I was like, man, this is actually really well done. And it was tasteful also, the way they did it. It didn't insist upon itself. Like, <laughs> goddamn Godfather series. Uh, oh, you saw <laughs> <laughs> Javi. Nope. Have you been watching anything else that you want to talk about? I've been watching a lot of Community. Yes, you told me that. You if you are... don't want community, you can go fuck yourself. I've never watched it. Oh, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that all about? <laughs> all right, here's the thing. First of all. Fucking, community... first of all, you, motherfucker. <laughs> community was on, isn't, I thought it was like severely overlooked because it was in a, sh- it was in a hard time slot. Good. It was on Thursday nights, 8.30. Like, like, and uh, before, at 9 o'clock at oh. 9.30 would be the office and parks and rec. A community would be before that. And before that would be the show called Caff and Ken. Community was a hard show. It was, oh. in, a, it was in a fucking no one situation. Oh, no. Everybody, oh my God. Office is better. No Parks and Rec is better. I've always been in the so, camp that community is so, hard. so much more better. Stop it. Than both. Okay. I'm sorry. I listened to what your rant was about community here. And that is very cute. Dan Harmon is awesome. But that fucking that is the most patronizing thing. You call me Dan, Dan, and then you patronize the kid. What is up with this? <laughs> you don't like Community, Jake? It's all right. I like Community in some seasons and some parts of it. Well, they're, they're you so, are not uh, cool, Mister Man. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, watch that last night, Misery. It's on fucking Amazon Prime now. Are you serious? Trying to find it for every oh, yeah. fuck yeah! Uh, it's on Hulu also right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. So go check out Community or don't check out Community? Watch Community. Absolutely. Watch Community. Watch Community. Uh, Jake, anything else you've been watching? Yeah, I started uh, McMillions. Oh, yeah, the documentary about the McDonald's. Yeah, scandal. about the McDonald's. What, what is that on? HBO. Yes, I want to watch that. I've heard it is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, I watched the first episode and a half last night and it was actually really good i was in, very intrigued it's been uh, out for a while now i think yeah you can probably i just love it. the story of it dude it's absolutely bonkers insane the shit that happened and uh, and the inside job that was the people winning that because i used to go on those websites and try to get the game pieces all the time and like people would be trading them and selling them and i remember that but i did not know how in-depth that shit went and the so, first episode is really fucking good because, like, it sets up the guy who kind of discovers it as this FBI agent, but he's he's a character, and he's fucking cool as shit, though. Like, he laughs and jokes like, oh, fuck, I don't know about this shit. You know, he's, but he's giving an interview to the, the people in his office at the FBI headquarters and shit, and he's talking so candidly. Like, it's great, though. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, he's setting it all up. What about uh, Barry? Is that worth a damn? Yes, Barry is so fucking worth a damn. I was legit worried about Bill Hader post SNL because he really didn't get any like, <laughs> big movies and shit like that. He but, was everywhere. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, nothing in Maine or nothing like that really hit. He still is. It. You're He's worried about him? You were like legit like at night going like, I hope, I hope Bill <laughs> Hader's going to be Bill Hader's okay. fucking talented. And you know, a lot of talented people... I thought Kristen Wiig would have been way bigger post SNL. <laughs> I hope she's Peter... about to be fucking Cheetah and fucking Wonder Woman. Yeah, they were the I two breakouts of the time that they won. That is the Sudeikis. But this is you, Javi. I hope I hope Hater makes it. <laughs> okay, look at Molly Shannon. <laughs> Fuck Molly Shannon. She was fucking uh, big on SNL. When she left, everybody thought, oh, she's gonna make it. She never did. I didn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, she's good on SNL. 
Why well, you keep dropping the ten? She goes, More mic drops. <laughs> I thought she was gonna be a fucking career member. But All anyway, right. oh, Molly Shannon about? wants to do her own movie. <laughs> oh, what? Barry. Yeah. You mean an Barry hour and a movie. half of fucking Mary Catherine Gallagher? <laughs> Holy shit. What makes it even better is how close he's gotten. He's like, listen, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got one more. One more. Oh, Harley right. Quinn, the DC animated show, is fucking amazing. Gotta watch it. It is a love letter in every way, shape, and form to Batman. Oh, Fuck you, dude. You ain't watched it yet. Second I'm going by Birds it, of Prey, which is fucking terrible. Okay, has nothing to do with Birds of Prey. It is its own thing. It is an adult cartoon, and it is gory as fuck. Dismemberments, heads coming off, fuck words. They're dropping, but it's here's the thing. It's funny, and it is legit funny, and the character building is so fucking good. Like, you who actually does the care. Voices? I have no idea. The one girl sounds like fucking Rashida Jones, who does the voice of Poison Ivy, and it's sexy as shit. It's That's all I know. Rashida Jones. No, it's not. Is it Tess McNeil? Uh, I will say that Alan Tudyk does the voice of the Joker, <laughs> and he does the voice of Clayman. Uh, Is it Arthur Kent? Did you just say Clayman? I said Clayman. No, the Joker is done by Alan uh, Alan Tudyk. Oh, yeah. I like I Alan like, Tudyk, man. I like yeah. the Alan Tudyk guy. But it, it's not even so much that. It's the... Uh, also, Diedrich Bader does Batman. That's the version of Batman. But it, it really... Shit. It is legit. Like the, it is one of the best versions of Batman I've ever seen because it is everything you wanted the animated series to be, but it's an adult way of doing it. So it has all that good shit, has all the good storylines, and it's actually a continuous storyline that's intriguing the whole time. I'm telling you guys, I really think that if you watch it, you're going to fucking love it because I fucking love it. I can't wait for the next season, which just started. Dude, it's so fucking good. Like, I'm not even joking. You've got to watch it. It's They do everything, dude. They have every callback to everything. They did the shark repellent. They had the fucking man shark, and Batman shows up, and he's like, I know how to handle this. And he pulls out the fucking shark repellent from the 66 <laughs> Batman. I was like, I fucking love this show! Everything yep. this show does makes me happy. It makes me just like, I need to start watching again. That's how good it is. And dig it. Anything else? I'm so excited that we're going to be starting anime. I saw the first movie yesterday. Zoom said we have to actually today. shut this down right now. Um, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, out of time. Um, <laughs> really? Really? The moment I started talking about that, was like, oh, look at the time. Really we got to go. Gotta we ran out of time. Zoom said zero seconds left. Work. I'm out hey, of quarters. Damn. All right, anime, Javi, go for it. What is anime going to be? No I crying. Mean, you no you crying. guys have the movies. I started on it yesterday. I watched Sword of the Stranger. Oh, You've already watched all these movies. You chose yeah, I've them. Seen them. I've seen them all. They're, it's gross how many times I've seen them. And I can't wait to start Samurai Champloo. That's going to be fun. I think you're going to like it. Jake literally just got a migraine. I watched it happen <laughs> on the fucking camera. It's so funny. He was like, battery's constipated, but the look on his face is utter pain. Because he pain. knows he is trapped. He's got no <laughs> excuse. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he is trapped in the look of his face he's like he's right i think you caused this so we'd have to watch fucking anime movies i think javi is the source of this shit that's how much he wanted us i don't i don't wish corona subconsciously oh. i just pull it out of ethan but i want you to fucking go to a prophet i've never heard of you I just know what? Up in there. well i have to get dick to watch anime and how, oh my this right. quarantine's eating away at my conscience, so I feel like I'm just lie to you and say that I watched this before. Hey, you could do what he does for everything. If you give yeah, Bobby movies to watch. He doesn't watch it. <laughs> you could be like that kid in third grade who's like, so I read uh, James <laughs> the Giant Peach. It's about James. And a giant peach. And, then, yeah. and, and I really, really liked it. And goodbye. Just quoting the synopsis five times in a row. Just acting like <laughs> yeah. that was, Wait, what if he gets oh, real okay. confident and he's yeah, like, the sword and the stranger? Gonna, all I need like, uh, I really like I'll just... sword. You know, the stranger was interesting. And uh, the thing <laughs> the stranger did with said sword, it was amazing. And I really loved the end. It had a good climax to it. Great character arc. The animation was so nice. Dude, Maybe I'm that's going to... I'm going to Wikipedia every single one of these and be like, yeah, didn't like it. Didn't like it. With that said, this is quarantine cast. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Like, for real. I love and miss y'all. Yeah. So hopefully but, uh, once this shit's all said and done, we can hang out. We can have a good time. Uh, fuck, I can't wait. I just can't wait. When this is all over, we need to get together and legit rage. 
Yes, I agree with you. I think it's we all just... said and done. We should get an apartment together. Yeah. <laughs> Miss your smell. I mean, are we going to? Miss your mask. I'm, I just need to smell you on my pillow like I smelled fucking Bill Hader every night. Just crying, <laughs> crying for Hader. I hope he'll be fine. Oh, Billy. Okay. All right. With that said, this has been Duck. I have been here with Jake and Javi. And thank you so much for fucking listening. And there it is. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If you have enjoyed it, please do not forget to share with your friends. That is how we grow the network. And if this is your first time listening, head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, and give We Are Podcast a like. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, you're going to love the other podcasts here on the We Are Podcast Network. We have We Are Bagoo, a video game podcast featuring me and Dr. Ethan Eastwood. That's where we talk Atari to Steam and everything in between. Don't forget, Heroes Jiro's a Dungeons and Distraction side quest. Me and the boys were sitting down. We're playing some D&D. We're having so much fun. You can go ahead and start that from the beginning of the journey. Season 1, Episode 1. You're going to love it all the way through. And finally, I hate being sober. Personal stories from epic people. I'm going to sit down with some of the most epic people I've ever met in this world. And we're going to talk about their life. We're going to talk about their trials and tribulations. And we're just going to talk about their journey this far. Head on over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash we are podcast. Also, head over to the Facebook group, We Are Era. We would love to see you in that group. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed the podcast today, share it with your friends. That's the only way we can grow this network. With that said, do not forget, support local comedy in any way that you can. We really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.